Hey guys, Ben here with Whitetail Edge. And uh, I'm just coming to you this morning because we are just getting blasted every year with the same questions over and over about Black Widow mock scrapes. So we want to kind of really cover this a little bit in detail. I want to kind of make this a video a little bit so this way we can just refer people to this link. So we don't have to answer all these private messages on Instagram and Facebook, you know, directly, which we like to do that. We're fine with that, but we are getting overwhelmed with them to the point to where we're not getting back to people and we hate that. Um, so we want to make this video to try to cover it as good as possible for, um, for you to understand. And so I'm going to start out with the early season and, you know, we'll start there. So let's start this time of year. Like right now we're sitting here. It's last day of August. Okay. People ask, when do you start your mock scrapes? Well, a lot of times this time of year, um, I will just make dirt visual scrapes. Okay. In places that I know I want the scrapes to be, I will just scratch the dirt open with a rake, with my feet, anything. Sometimes I urinate in them myself, but when I do add lure to them this time of year, I'll use something like Young Buck, okay? Um, because you're not going to get does. I mean, sometimes I'll use straight dough, but very, very seldom this time of year will I get does urinating in a scrape. And it's very seldom that even bucks are urinating completely in a scrape. They'll come over, sniff the old scrapes out that were there that they used a lot in the breeding season last year. Um, and then there's certain scrapes that you know, what I call primary scrapes that all the deer use. Then you have scrapes that are kind of a certain buck scrape um, that he makes. Then other deer will use them, and that's kind of a tactic that can really tick other deer off. But anyways, so this time of year, I don't use breeding smells. I'll just use something like, you know, the young buck. Um, it's just a, you know, it's a young male deer urine. Um, it gets that scrape kind of started in a sense let's take this a step further and talk about like where I try to make my scrapes. Okay. So one of the things I do is I'll, I'll make my scrapes close to areas that I want to hunt. So like on edges, you know, where deer I think are exiting a bedding area, coming to a food source and where they're going to come into that food source or stage for a second in between the food and bedding are great places to make mock scrapes. Um, a lot of times deer, if, especially in heavily hunted areas or pressured areas, if you don't have a really hidden pocket for the food source, sometimes they don't make it there till dark. So you need to be in between. And so then I'll, I'll make like a couple scrapes knowing where the bedding areas are, coming from the bedding area to the food, and I will try to catch that buck staging on those scrapes coming to the food source. Uh, that's early season, you know. That way you can, and that's, that's early into even, you know, pre-rut mid-October time. Because they're just, they're not seeking yet, but they're starting to feel their oats. But this time of year, if you're just wanting to get pictures, it's fine to just put those scrapes on the edges of fields, things like that. And they're not going to come up and just be destroying them, especially when they're in velvet. I mean, but they may walk by it and smell it. But more than anything it's to get it started because what you'll find that'll happen is these deer will take those scrapes over then once their hormones really start acting up they lose their velvet they're getting jacked up they will start using that scrape as fall progresses you know you've already started it they see it they're going to take it it's just how this is what they do it's worked for me over and over and over again so again refreshing we go with the young buck early or like a straight doe scent no no breeding scent i don't i don't do that Sometimes I'll use the branch butter in the, you know, in the leaves of the tree. You know, it's a preorbital gland that's, you know, in their, uh, around their eyes and stuff. So, you know, they're rubbing their foreheads, their, their eyes, they're, you know, they're rubbing those head glands in those branches. They will do that in velvet. I've watched them on the edges of fields kind of do that. They just like the feel of it. But I still don't get too crazy with the branch butter. I mean, I just use a little dab because it's pretty strong smelling. Um, just get some on your finger and wipe your face accidentally and you'll know what I'm talking about. So to answer another question, a lot of people want to know how often do you freshen a scrape? Well, early season like this, before it's even open, I do it one time. I start that scrape, 
like I said, it's more about the visual. Then I leave it alone. Um, as we're moving into now deer hardhorn, they've lost velvet. You're getting into October. They're starting to feel, you know, more like a buck again. The bachelor groups are starting to break up. Then I will slowly start to add a little more branch butter to these scrapes. I will maybe make more scrapes. I'll do things like I call scrape traps, where I'll make two or three scrapes in an area between that food source and the bedding. You know, trying to catch that buck when he's getting ready to start showing his dominance in his area, where he wants to start roaming a little bit more, uh, getting back to bed later, leaving bed earlier, things like that. Um, I want to like take advantage of that to where when he gets up out of his bed, it becomes a routine. That's where he wants to go. Um, you know, because the first thing they do when they stand up is they take a dump, they pee, they rub around their bedding area, they stink it up, they rub on some trees, they'll scrape. You know, I don't want to be right in it. I want to be a little bit out from it to where I can get in and out and not bump that deer a bunch and use my cameras to let myself know when he's doing that daylight activity because that can be a really great tactic when everybody's talking about the lull of October or when early season October and it's hot and you know deer hard to kill or you know get on you got to just get close to them you know especially if you're limited on time that's just what you got to do so moving on you know for this time period in October I will slowly start to transition from straight buck or you know young buck and straight doe I will start to use a little different stuff sometimes I'll use like a dominator lure okay that's another dominant buck um, it's a dominant, it's an older buck smell, and I'll use it in a situation where, you know, it just, it kind of lets another, it lets that deer know that there's another deer around using his scrape. And I won't do it a lot. I mean, I just, now I will when it comes time to hunt, and I'll get into that a little bit differently here coming up. But Dominator is a very effective lure to make a big buck upset and get him to come to his scrape a little earlier. But again, this mid-October phase, they're not breeding yet. They're just thinking about girls. They're still putting on a lot of fat, trying to, you know, feed. So they're more interested in feeding, drinking water, you know, putting on weight for the rut. They're gonna make some scrapes. They're gonna hit those things, but that's not their primary focus, in my opinion, at this point in time. But those field edge scrapes, I still feel are the places to mainly keep your focus at this time and you know running cameras dylan you want to hand me that camera <clears throat> so like this spartan camera here this is their new model see how nice and small it is but uh this camera you know one thing i i'll use these on those field edge scrapes and a lot of times or those you know i'll use them in the the, the staging area scrapes too obviously that's you know where i really want to know but when you start getting a buck, say in the morning time, hitting a scrape going back to bed in the daylight on an edge of a field or in that staging area, you know that that deer is at that phase of his, you know, his hormones that he's getting to the point where he wants to start cruising his territory. He wants to start pushing those other bucks out of his neck of the woods right there. He's no longer going to be real friendly with young bucks. Um, he's just kind of going to want to do his thing. He wants to be the boss and he's going to be dominant. So he's really going to start getting more aggressive with his scrapes, you know, that October 15th going in to the end of October. Um, so running these cameras on the edge of, you know, fields like that or in those staging areas and starting to pick up that activity level, take real note of that because it'll kind of tell you what mood those bucks are in. Now, you're getting mid-October, now you're getting into that time period that's my absolute favorite, which is like October 20th to that first part of November. October 23rd is a magical day for me. I've killed three booners on October 23rd. Um, it's just a great time. That week before Halloween, just, I don't know, it's just something about those big bucks. It just gets to them, especially if the weather is decent at all, like a little bit cool or you get a cold front. They are going to food, they're gonna work them scrapes, they're just gonna feel very active. But preparing for that stage, that's when I'll start using a little more like 
you know, a matriarch doe estrus lure, you know, like sometimes there's always a doe in an area that comes in first. There's always, these bucks know that too. They always know where the first doe pops. <clears throat> and I've had farms before in the past where I've had deer come into heat like on the 17th, 18th. And all of a sudden you get this flurry of activity in October and you're like, what are all these bucks doing in this farm? Well, here what it is, it just happens to be a doe that pops early. And that doesn't happen everywhere, but sometimes it does. And I happen to have had that experience one time. I haven't really had it since, um, but it was pretty crazy. And then it was just over. You like It was like the false rut. You thought everything was going to break loose, and it really didn't. But I'll start to, to transition to some doe estrus scent like that in those spots um, where I want to hunt. And I won't do it a lot, again, you, especially in that staging area. You don't want to be marching in there all the time, laying your scent down. This is more in those secondary zones on the edges of those fields, okay? Because truthfully, by now, in that staging area, <clears throat> these bucks should have already taken that spot over. They should be making them scrapes on their own, okay? And, and making that scrape that you've already made a mock scrape, they should be taking it over and doing it on their own. You don't need to go in there. You've already got your stand set for those winds. You, you know, you've got your camera running, kind of knowing what's going on in that neck of the woods. So you don't need to be in there. But you can freshen those scrapes on the edge of fields if you feel like it. But I wouldn't do it more than, you know, every week, especially that, or if not even sometimes. You know, again, these deer should start taking it over. What I'm going to talk about now is like you're getting into that hunting phase, like this deer is doing what you want it to do. You really want to aggravate this buck, like you want to make him tick to the point to where he's going to walk in front of you well in daylight. And one of the tactics, like I was talking about, was scrape traps, where you may have an, an area where you know that buck is bedding, you know there's a doe bedding area over here, his food source is here, and you got like you can create funnel situations, or like if you've got a certain terrain feature that pushes that deer to a certain spot going into those. Those are what I look for. I look for those spots that next that deer down. And then you make those two or three scrapes within 20, 30 yards of each other, and you kind of get a scrape frenzy going on, is what I call it. And then I will start using something like Dominator um, that really gets that deer, like who in the heck is in my neighborhood here? You know, I've done push a lot of these young bucks off. They know not to be in here. And now I got some other guy coming in here and urinating in my scrape. So Dominator or like Scrape Master are two good scents for that. Scrape Master is a mixture of different breeding scents. Um, so it's not just one scent together. But I killed a big deer years ago in Illinois. If you can look that hunt up, it was, it's called Scrape Master. I think it was our first or second year doing Whitetail Edge ourselves. And uh, great buck, 180 some inch deer, cool scrape. You know, I just knew that deer was around because the only time he was ever around on that farm was when he was on that scrape. But anyways, so moving on, you know, use these tactics and you know, you can adjust them yourself. You can tell by the mood of the deer whether you need to be revamping these scrapes. If you go in there and you freshen them up all the time and it just makes the, the activity more and more, well then I guess you're not doing anything wrong. I have found that I don't typically need to do that. Now, when I go in to hunt at times, there's times I will freshen those scrapes up right then. And as you know, you get to that past October period, mid-October period, I really start using the branch butter heavy then, you know, because they're really climbing up in those branches. They're raking them, they're putting that scent in there. You know, they're, they're stomping into the dirt, you know, which their interdigital glands in their feet, you know, they're putting that smell into the thing. They urinate down their hawks. That's why big bucks hawks get all black because He's urinate down through there. Those glands get that all smelly. That's his smell. That's him. He's marking that scrape. And again, there's some scrapes that are called like, you know, primary scrapes that every deer in the neighborhood uses. Then there's hub scrapes that are on the outsides, like on those field edges, things like that. And then you've got what I call like a personal scrape, which those are the ones that I really try to focus on for the hunting time where those deer are close to those bedding areas. 
um, or where that one buck likes to spend a lot of his time in that 10, 15 acre area, you know, his core. So again, you start adding some branch butter to those spots and some dominant buck, you just fire him up because he gets mad. He wants to know who's using that scrape and he wants to push you out of there. So sometimes he'll start moving earlier trying to catch that buck. You know, who's in there? Like, why is he, you know, who is this guy? I want to run into him so I can kick his butt. Deer, whitetails are very aggressive, um, most of them. And, you know, they just don't tolerate a lot of that interference, you know, if it's a real older buck. Five, six-year-old deer, um, they don't like it. So I've had a lot of success doing that. I haven't explained a lot of that in super detail because... You know, as a big deer hunter, you know, whitetail killer, you try to keep some secrets close to your chest. Um, but I've just got to that point, you know what, I, I've had such great success over the years. I've killed 15 booners, uh, gross boon deer, you know, I feel like I can share, you know, and it's time to start helping other people. And that's why we've been very informative on Whitetail Edge the last few years of trying to help you become a better hunter. Um, you know, I hope this helps you. You know, the one thing that I do want to talk about is the V. So this is kind of like as the rut comes in and these deer are breeding, like it's full on rut. This is where this special lure is going to come into place. You don't want to use it any other time but that to me because it's vaginal secretions. It's a doe and estrus. It's time to rock and roll. You don't want to, deer are not stupid, big bucks are not dumb. So you don't want to misuse this and you don't want to overuse it. The V is just, it's a great lure, you know, for the full on rut. When they're seeking, looking for that doe and heat, hot and ready, you know, the triple X hot and ready or just regular hot and ready are great lures. This is full on estrus, you know, let's get it on type, you know, lures. And so this is a you know this is that time this is what these bucks have been feeding for you know putting all this weight on you know the seeking phase starts in that you know last part of october going into maybe the first few days of november then you start getting deer that are actually in heat bucks are locking down with does they lose a doe they start looking for a doe again the v is a smell that will drive them nuts um it's just it's special that's all i can say about it so this is something you want to save in your arsenal. If you're still hunting at that time frame in your state or wherever you're at, this is that lure that you want to use in one of those scrapes or um, maybe not even in a scrape. This is something you could actually make a drag with. You could, you know, put the air, you know, put it on a scent rag in your tree and let, just let it blow across the land if you're hunting a good funnel, whatever, because you may just pick up a strange buck. Um, it's that powerful. Um, it's hard to get. It's hard to make because you're collecting a very unique type smell from these adult does and uh, it's hard to make it and get it. So anyways, that's, these are the, the lures that we use. Um, the matriarch is probably one of my favorite lures. I don't know why I just had a lot of luck with the doe matriarch um, because it's an older doe. It's an adult doe. You know, a lot of times I'll put this in the scrapes a lot of times I'll use this scent just in the tree stand. You know, you'll see on my videos a lot where I'm just, if I get deer downwind of me, I'll spray it. And you'll see the deer just kind of like, oh, that's just that old doe, you know, type of thing. And I can get by with a lot. I would encourage you to go watch a hunt that, you know, I put out two years ago. It's called Splits. Um, and you'll see that I actually had a deer lay down right in front of us. And we're working on a, a, a mixture right now that... Uh, is going to be kind of that same kind of scent you know that works like this but a little bit different um that you will be able to use as you know your cover as you know just the way i do it um and i think it'll be really effective for you so when that comes out we will let you know but i hope this video helps you know and as the rut you know keeps going on if you haven't had success during the rut because like truthfully I actually hate hunting right during the actual rut. I don't think it's that great. I would rather hunt before it or after it um, because during the rut, deer are so unpredictable. You know, you could have a really big deer patterned or figured out, 
and you can just throw all that out the window because once he starts getting on does, they de they determine his whole day. Um, and he could get, you know, he could get killed by another buck. He could get hit by a car. You could be hunting a, a dead deer and you don't even know it for days. Uh, cause you're not going to get tons of pictures of these deer a lot of times at that point, like you were. Um, that's when I start transitioning my cameras, you know, to areas like funnels for sure, where they're going to be walking through and seeking phases, you know, fence gaps, things like that. Um, so you just kind of have to be a smart hunter. I could talk for hours about this, but these are the basics that should be able to help you figure this out. But as the, you know, as the post rut starts coming in, you can, those breeding scents are still effective because one thing I have found is really mature deer are the last ones to start actual rutting and breeding does, um, you know, or like going crazy seeking them, but they're the last ones to quit. That's why like you're going to grandma's for Thanksgiving dinner and it's, you know, that late November time and all of a sudden you see this 180 inch deer just moping across the field like he's lovesick, middle of the day, you know, and you're like, what are you doing? Well, that's what he's doing. He does not want to stop yet. And so it's a really good time at that point that you can get a deer like that on like that V smell or the hot and ready, um, you know, even just regular doe smell because they want to come check you out. But those breeding scents late in the year like that can be very effective with scent drags, using them in scrapes, spraying them from your tree, things like that. Um, it's just, these lures work. They're 100% fresh every year. They do not stay on the shelf. It's not like some other lures where you're gonna walk into Walmart and they've been sitting there for three years until they sell, knocking the dust off of them. We take everything off the shelf every year. We work with our dealers to the point to where whatever they don't sell, we send them a check back and they don't have to pay for it because we don't want it on the shelf. We want you as the customer to have fresh lures every year to use in your stand. And we really feel that's what makes our lures the best. Don't freeze them. That's the worst thing you can do to urine is put it in the freezer. Do not freeze it. Um, if you want to keep it somewhat refrigerated, that's not going to hurt it. Definitely don't store it in the sun or throw it in your backpack in the back of your truck, full sunlight all the time. That's not good for it either. You know, use it smart and these lures will be very effective for you. 